You may be seated. I'll tell you, I'll certainly enjoy the great privilege to be able to come into the presence of our Abba and to offer the offering of praises unto him that he grants nation the privilege by his election, a people that misfits. Actually, we have nothing to offer. But what he has placed within our bosom, the breath of his Ruach, he is Ruach. And so as we speak, we speak of his excellence and his magnificent power. We have no power to retain life. We have no power to create life. We have no authority to create breath or air. And so we owe it all unto him. And it's not the quality of one's voice, it's the emphasis that comes from one's love. That is the centrality of the motivation whereby all emotional, all attachments, all of one's uh, attachment, it comes from what we call the love, one's mind, the heart. And so what a great privilege it is to bless him. I don't say that without saying it with total honesty. Because I know as David said from Sheol, from the grave, from the depths of the darkness of grave, then there is no praises unto Yah. And so while he has granted unto me the nature, the strength to brach, to bow down, to bless him, I shall do that with great emphasis. I'm not ashamed of the message of Yahshua HaMashiach. The power of Yah that delivers me and make me free. And as long as he grants me a call, a voice of substance, I shall utilize it to its, ex its extremes, to hara, to cry out, and to praise him. I'm very undignified when it comes to that. I'm not concerned what one says or how they look at me. I frankly don't give. I don't care. And that's the truth, for it is the beauty of the Torah that motivates me. It is what keeps the constant in my bosom, my mind, because I know that it is truth. It is all the substance of whom Yahweh is. He has not negated to take care of everything in our lives through that instructions of Torah. And to know that he has granted that unto me, he has measured his breath in me, and not to offer that back unto him, something is vastly sickly in my mind. And so I will let, allow nothing to remove me from that Israel. Nothing, never, hallelujah. And of course, I believe that the older I get, the more, the more willing and the more delight that I do, I secure from that or it is brought unto me. When I do that, I will not allow my emotions or some kind of superficial feeling not to allow me to sing with all I have. And to lift up my voice with all of the emphasis of his strength, his nurturing, his nature, his power. And to sing, I will rejoice in all things that he caused to venture into my life or because he has ordained and set all things right in my life. So I'm not disappointed in anything. I'm glad. And so I give him Toda, and all things I will give him Toda, Toda. It, it is an expression of great delight, of great joy. It is a symphony of the chorus of one's heart uh, that it sings, it rejoices, it shouts. Uh, it, it's, over, it's overwhelmed by the beauty of Almighty Yahweh. As I said to us, I have been doing some studying on death. So I want to do all, I don't want to be one that talk. I want my actions to be made known. Hallelujah. I want it to be made known. I understand the depths of death. I'm not fearful of that. It's a fact that we all are going to be confronted with one day soon. Hallelujah. And I want him to know for sure that all that he does each day, each second, that he calls life to resuscitate me. 
to get up, to walk, to be alive. I'm not going to sit before humdrum. Just when we think about a man's wisdom, it makes his countenance shine with great beauty. But a man is wise, his countenance emulates the power of Almighty Yah. The man is weak, his countenance is a perpetual stench of his damn weakness. And that's the truth. And there's no greater strength than to rejoice in the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm glad. I see what that David said. I was glad. He said, let's go to the house. I don't like missing service. There are times that uh, things that incapacitate us. And I don't like that. I like to come to the house to bless my Abba, to sing before him. And I do tell to him from day one, I've always been like this. I didn't want to sit back there because people could look at me. So I would come here and sit right here. You won't see nothing but my, the back of my head. And that's it. I don't care if you look at that. And from a young man, I've always, has always caused my heart to rejoice and to praise him. I did it in ignorance, stupidity. I was unlearned. But it granted a measure of knowledge and wisdom to me, even in all that process. I've never been ashamed. I've never held back anything. I'm not boasting in that. I've never. I've never been staunch. And you care what the man of God was saying, I always recognize that that's truth. Even though he was ignorant of what he was saying, so was I. But there was a measure of great fruitfulness in that to me. In all of my ignorance, I could always garner the, the, the delightsome things from Torah. Always. So we rejoice in Yoshua HaMashiach as we greet you all, Yisrael. You that have joined us on the live broadcast on this Kitve, Imat, Imat Kitve, Scripture Truth, whereby we shall teach from the beauty of the Torah, the Yafet. That's what the Torah does. It dresses our minds. It dresses us. It makes us beautiful. Yoshua was the Torah, the word made flesh, was he not? And behold, how beautiful are the feet of him that declares unto us the measure of the power of Torah. And that's what the Torah does. It removes all spots, blemishes, all those things that interfere with our beauty shining forth. That's what it does. And so she calls our face to shine out as a light. I rejoice. Hallelujah. We greet you all that have joined us, our friends, our enemies. I do want to say to you that extended your arm of gifts on the past week that we could purchase the things that we needed. We are able to do that and your gifts were tremendous, and I do appreciate that. There was one that wrote and said, Riach, we will send this, my Ish and I, but do not read this letter over the broadcast. And so I will not read the letter that the person sent. Uh, sometimes we don't understand that what we do will strengthen the heart of others. We should never... And I know that this home is listening, and they sent quite a substantial amount of money. But still, I will tell the truth. And so it is the power of our eduth, our testimony, and that inspired the hearts of others. So we should never hold back. Yah grants unto you a measure, whereby this one may not have the measure, then that will inspire them even in your situation and your circumstance, and cause the doors to be open for them. So we don't have to hide anything because, and not that this Ochotz was hiding anything, but Yah wants us to do that. Let our light so shine. Nothing wrong with that. So I will let my light shine, Yisrael. The testimony of His power, His truth. Hallelujah. It's one thing that in all the years that Yah has granted unto me a nature or a measure of honesty and to be sincere. Because it's one thing that Yah put in me years ago, the confidence of trust. 
Someone told you something, leave it alone. And I say the thing of it is, I, I get it, I throw it out of my mind so I don't have to remember it. And when I need to remember it, I remember that. And so although they have been long gone from here, I still will not tell anyone. I say they will be surprised because I know what they have told me. And they told me because they had confidence. And that's why Yah grants are not to every man, but some men. The wisdom of his Torah. Not every man. The strength of a man is his ability to be able to comprehend, to hear, to shemach. To shemach. That shemach is more than just hearing. It is the, it is, first of all, the ability to obey when one hears. So you've got to be willing to obey it. And practice that and perform it. Hallelujah. So we greet you all again. I want to teach tonight. I want to begin here. I want to bring forth a simple truth. I think that will strengthen the bosom of Yisrael. Not only that, with the tremendous exhortation. The Torah, as a Zachin Yaramayahi, he expressed unto us this great badakh, this confidence of trust that solidifies our imuna, our faith, our desire, our passion for Yah, because we have confidence in everything that he said. And we must have confidence in every word that he speaks unto us, Israel. It is the sure thing for this nation. And because there is no tremendous effort to seek out the riches of the treasures of Yah, we find ourselves uh, in places of cesspools uh, whereby our minds cannot even dig out of this mess that we are in. And that's why there is no satisfaction. That's why there is no delight. We don't rejoice because we don't understand the depths of the Torah, the riches of this great book. I can see if it was the natural form of silver and gold, uh, all that fades. In our lives, the luster of it, we, we're born, we're young, we get old, and we die. It's just the truth. And so whereby gold and silver will not satisfy the components of one's life, it is the riches of the treasures of the Torah that satisfy every aspect. I want to begin here in Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. There is one word here I want to emphasize in chapter, verse 10. You all know what, know what it says, but I want to read it. Read it. He says unto his nation, he says, I want you to bring all of your tithes, all that I have granted unto you. It's vitally important that we understand that it is Almighty Yahweh that gives. And so if he asks us, Yisraya, as a nation... To open up the bowels of our kindness and mercies that represents him. And then we do it as unto him. He didn't ask for some. He said all. He didn't ask for a portion. He uses the word call. The whole of one substance. The magnitude of one, one possess. Melchiah. Melchiah. Chapter 3 verse 10. He said I want it to be brought into my utzah into my storehouse, into the place whereby there shall be enough to refresh the wayfaring man, the widow that is in need. I want it to be brought into my storehouse that there will be sufficient to take my people through the droughts of the great agonies of battles that they encounter. So he did not ask for some. He said, I want you to bring what you owe me. Now, there are things that we owe Yah that we don't bring to his house. We owe him the exaltation of praises and lifting our voices, our hands, to be faithful in our prayer life, to understand how to forgive. That's part of this process that Yah commands us. He said, bring all. He specifies, specifically specify one aspect of what we should bring, all of our tithes. All of our ma'asiyah, our tithes into his storehouse. He says for one purpose that there may be tarif or meat, substance. The substance, Yoshua says, 
that the Torah of the power of the Torah in this body, it is meat. Indeed. Amadam is drink. It is the refreshing of life. You understand that, that the life is in the dam, in the blood. So in the process of this living blood that even hell itself did not uh, cause the stench and the rottenness of that to, uh, to prevail against it. There is no vile stinking thing that tries to overtake our mind that will cause us to become rotten and stink and we fester in the rottenness of some putrefied vile thing. I teach with more than one aspect of the Torah. As I talk, the words just come. You understand? He says, and what I want you to do when there shall be teref or teref, food in my house, in my bed, he says, and I want you to bachan, I want you to prove. He says, I want you to examine the Torah. You can't examine Yah because he is infamous. He is beyond the scope of our mind. He said, examine me. Well, how do we examine him? We examine our Abba by his testimonies. He says, Bohan, examine, and even tells us to scrutinize him. And we examine him. You cannot examine him with this kind of epiphany or this strange gyration of this emotional expression on your face. He said, try me. He said, examine me. Examine the book. Examine my testimony. And see if it's truth. He says, try me. Yah says, uh, he says, try me now in this thing. That there is, as Zachary reminded us, uh, that we have confidence, we trust Yah, that we mbotak, we trust him. He says, uh, he says, and I want you to prove me now in this thing, uh, says Omar Yahweh as He is the one of hosts. He is the one that has the military power. The power to subdue any enemy that rises up against us. So, he says, I want you to do that and I want you to see if I will not potak. If I will not herald open, open up what he said. I will not fling the windows of Hashema and the Aruba. He says, uh, and when I do that, I will not open up the windows of Hashema and and he uses this is what I want to turn to tonight. This words, Ruk. And see if I will not pour you out a berechaya, a blessing. Not blessings. But he said, I will pour yeah. you out. Shafat. Or I shall Ruk. I will empty out the heavens. Not what the lying, facetious dogs are teaching. Because the Torah talks much about Yah pouring out his wrath and his indignation and his terror and his destruction. The Torah is filled with that example. But there is a preciseness of what Yah says I will pour out. That I shall rook. I will empty the heavens. I will cause the, it to distill like a flood upon my nation. We don't need Cadillacs. We don't need no damn gold or silver. It has corrupted us. It has removed us far away from Almighty Yahweh. It has not caused us to embrace him. Money will not do it. The finery of what we call luxury will not do it. It will not cause you to embrace him. He said, I want you to, uh, I want you to try me. I want you to test me, to scrutinize me. I want you to do that. And I want you, again, I want you to see in this one thing, just try me in this thing. I know how that, that, that has been uh, taken to extort, to rape the minds of many. 
to rob them, and yet there is nothing that has been opened in their lives. Nothing but the door of darkness and death and death and bondage. That's all been poured out upon them. There is no better guy of the riches of Yah's great uh, exaltation uh, that would express uh, the happiness of Yah. That is not what has taken place yesterday, Yah. He said, I will rook, I will pour out you a blessing. I've been around long enough to know what these liars say. Yah says, I will pour, I will rook. I will cause the heavens to be empty. I will show you the vastness of the heaven. I just want you to try me with this one thing. Just test me. And see if I, if I will not open up the windows of Hashem. What do want? we want him to pour out? Cadillac for us all or Maybox? Bank accounts with tens of millions of dollars. It doesn't satisfy the depths of one's being. It doesn't bring about any kinds of platitude at all. It doesn't cause one to rejoice. Not at all. I will show you what he will pour out onto us. We don't need houses or land. We need food and raiment, and therewith we should be very contented. We don't need silver or gold. We don't need to invest. In the markets of darkness, we invest in one thing, and that's truth. We invest our eternal existence, our nephesh, our being, our life substance in truth. I want y'all to empty out the heavens for me. I will show us. Can I take us on and express? I don't know if it's going to be a smorgasbord. I'm just serving up one. Delight, all right. No variations of it at all. Uh, no other kind of little condiments uh, to satisfy the palate. Offer you one thing. Let us examine this, Yisraya. The Yah says, I will open up the window. I will open up this window. And when Yah uses that, he is talking about he will open up the window. We think that that is some kind of win window opened from the heavens. We've been taught that. I'm glad that y'all never allowed me to teach that kind of a lie. I've never taught it. He said, I will open up the aruba, the window of heaven. And if you study the Torah, you will always find that the aruba, it represents that Yah begins to pour out the revelation of his wisdom and knowledge unto the nation of Yisrael. That's the window. It is not a window where Arnold Palmer Cadillacs come out. It is not a window where Maybox $10,000 suits, uh, diamond rings, uh, pearls, uh, it doesn't come out of that window. The Arupa of Yah, he is talking about a window whereby the knowledge of the prophecy of his Torah, if we trust him. It's all about what Zachin Yaramiya taught us on Khidve Imad, uh, this confidence, this trust. He says, see if I, if I will not open up the windows. And then I want to pour. I like that part. I want you to see the manifestation of this pouring of Almighty Yah. I want you to turn to Zechariah. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 9. Yah speaks unto his nation. And he shows his sorrow... But his great compassion for people. Even though we have sinned, we have walked wickedly before Yah. He speaks to this degree, Zachariah, Zachariah, chapter 12, verse 9. And he speaks about this day. He says, and it shall come to pass, it shall enter in the word combo, it shall come to pass in that day. He is precise. He is specific. He said that I will seek to destroy Shomad, to bring down, to annihilate, to desolate, to desecrate, uh, 
to bring down to the ashes of earth. Yah says, I will seek and it shall come to pass in that day that I will destroy not some, not a few. He is precise in his expression. He said, all nations, all go in, all nations that come up against Yerushalayim, the city of Shalom, the city of the mind, whereby my Shalom, our mind, Yisra'ya, our Laba, is the city whereby the Shalom of Yah dwells, where it is our great confidence of great trust in our Abba. We are the light of the earth, are we not? We are the salt of the earth. And if the salt loses its uh, fragrance, it is tough for nothing. Uh, it is meant for nothing to be thrown out and trodden on uh, by foot. Uh, we are the light of the earth. We are the city of Yah. We are city that sits uh, upon the hill. We are the representation uh, of Yerushalayim. That's what we are, the city of Shalom, Yisrael. He said, I will seek to Shemad, uh, to eviscerate, to destroy, to destroy them, all nations uh, that come up against Yerushalayim. And then this is what he says. I like this part. He says, I will shofak, I will pour out, I will empty, I will empty upon Beit David and upon the inhabitants of Yerushalayim. I like this. He says, the ruach, the spirit, the ruach of chen, of great compassion, of great consideration. You see, I'd rather he pour that out upon me uh, than a raggly Maybach or Mercedes Benz. He said, I will pour that out upon the inhabitants of Yerushalayim and upon the bed of David. He said, I will uh, shofak. I will empty out the heavens. I will pour out upon them uh, the ruach of chain of favor. And not only that, but he said of supplication, uh, whereby we travail uh, and we press beyond the perils uh, of the opposition of our mind. Yeah. I'd rather have that, Yisrael, than 10,000 tons of silver. The favor of Yah brings life and confidence. It brings assurance. It brings the tigvah, Yisrael. He says, when I do that, and they shall look upon me. Hallelujah. Whom they have dacha. Whom they have pierced. We have pierced the heart of Yah. Not only have we pierced his heart, we have pierced uh, the side of Yeshua Hamashir, as they looked upon him whom they had peers. He says, they shall look upon me whom they have dachah. They have, they have caused great agony upon my heart. It's only because he shall pour out the ruach of favor and supplication upon us. I don't want you to pour out the ruach of disillusion and death and separation upon me, Yisrael. I don't want the Cadillacs and the things that we think uh, that brings the air shove. It doesn't bring that. Uh, it doesn't bring that at all. What brings the favor of Yah is that we are contented in all that he grants unto us. Uh, and we have confidence in what he says, Yisrael. I will pour out. Uh, I will shove. Uh, I will cause it to distill, uh, to flow, uh, to drip uh, from Hashem I am. For my nation, my people in the city of Yerushalayim, in the, in the city of the mind, whereby there is the pure light, the awe, the ma'or, the light of Yahshua HaMashiach. Know that the light is there because we rejoice in the blessings of our Abba. We got great excitement when we hear that name. Hallelujah. He said, and we shall be a people and we shall mourn for him the things that we have done. There shall be a great repentance. There shall be a sorrowfulness. And it should be. Whatever we do unto the least of these little ones, we do it unto Almighty Yahweh. Whatever we do unto Yisrael, we do it unto our Abba. Any assault that we assault, hurl against one another, we do it as unto Yah. He said, and they shall mourn, they shall weep with great travailing. As one mourns 
for his only son. As Yah's hearts open up, yeah, Yoshua was the only begotten, but you was the only son that he placed in that position, that the dumb of Yoshua will be poured down upon you at the cover of your sin, just you. There was those and there was just you. We are the sons of Yisrael. We are begun through the zero of the seed of Abraham, uh, through the birthright or the inheritance uh, in Yoshua HaMashiach. We have an inheritance, Yisrael. Pour out your ruach of favor upon me, yeah. Hallelujah. And shall be in great smara. We shall be in bitterness for what we have done to Abba for Yoshua and for Yah. And as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. As though that we have lost our firstborn, Yisraya, as we lose our first love, as we began to recess from the things of Yah, and began to pursue those things that do not bring about the fulfillment of Yah's Torah in our bosom, that we don't rejoice in the Torah of Yah, that we are not excited about the Torah of Yah, that we don't embrace what Yah commands us, Yisraya, and we should embrace all that Yah commands us, everything uh, that He grants unto us, we should embrace that uh, with the fullness of appetite that, uh, that we gorge ourselves, we grammatize, we eat uh, until we can't eat no more. Feed me until I can't eat no more, Yisrael. Yeah? Yet his ruach of favor of chen, there is nothing like that. He said, try me and see if I will not pour out that ruach of favor and supplication. As the old ones would say, you know, sometimes you just got to cry sometimes. And there are times that we need to fall into that supplication. What about their cries of agony and travailing in our ruach? We should not want the spirit of bitterness and anger against you all to be poured out upon us. Not the spirit of greed and lust and desires of these things that a temperance do not bring anything to about, about in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Pour it out, yeah. That's what we need. We don't need money and clothes. We are much more valuable than the sparrows, and you take care of them, man. And that they all die. Even the sparrows die. Hallelujah. So we began here in the Nobi Zachariah where he says uh, he will pour out this great uh, hang, this great kindness uh, upon uh, his people. And Yah has always, that's what you're sure, he brings us to that knowledge of perfect obedience unto Yah. That we should obey him in all things, Yisrael. And what uh, he calls us uh, to do or he instructs us uh, that in our obedience uh, that we understand the might of his power. That's why he says, uh, try me uh, and see if I will not pour. So he calls the Nobi, Yeshia, Isaiah, to speak with great utterance unto the nation uh, of the great magnitude of what Yashoruk, Shafak upon his people, Yeshia chapter 45. Verse 7, he wants us to understand the power of his might. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. Yah says, I want you to understand, Yisra'ya, that I formed the ore, the light. He formed the lights of the heavens, did he not? He says that I want you to know as well as I created that. That's why we don't have to be afraid of darkness. Uh, he says, I bara, I created. Uh, I was the one that created and formed darkness. Uh, I formed that. He says, I made Shalom. We are the city of Shalom. That's what Yerushalayim is. It is the city with the Shalom of Yah, where we have confidence. Where we have, as our Zokin Aretra, we have Botak. We have confidence. We have trust in Almighty Yah. And that's what Shalom is. He said, I created Shalom. You don't have to fear no damn devil or evil thing. Yah says, I bara evil too. He created evil as well. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 7. And he puts an exclamation mark here. He says, I am almighty Yahweh. And I do all these things. Nothing can be done without him. Yisrael. He speaks that to us. That we understand how faithful he is. And what that does, it produces a faithfulness of obedience and confidence unto him. He says, drop down, you Shemayam, 
which are far from above. He says, and let the skies, he said, I want the sky to pour, listen now, pour down sadiq, pour down righteousness. Pour down your righteous Torah into my mind, your bosom, let the heavens cause the Torah of Yah to be poured down in my mind. We've allowed every kind of filthy thing to come down from the demons of darkness, from the Shodems, uh, and to inhabit our minds. Yah says, uh, I shall nasal, I shall nasal, I shall cause it to flow like a stream. When he pours it down, it shall flow as a vivid, livid stream that flows. He says, I will cause the heavens to open up, and I will cause my sadiq, my character, my nature, my nurturing of your mind to be poured down. He said, let the earth be opened. We are the earthen tabernacle of Yah. We are the earthen vessels of Yah. We must show that, open our minds uh, to his truth uh, with great confidence and trust him. That's all we have to do. He said, see if I will not. I know what the liars say. He's going to pour you out a mansion. No, he's going to pour out something that is greater than a mansion. That a mansion cannot retain the Sadiq. He said, I will cause the Shemayim, the heavens open. And I will cause my righteousness, my Sadiq, my character, my mandate to be poured down. It shall cause it to be Nazan. It shall flow like a river, a river stream into your bosom, Yisrael. He says, let them... Bring forth deliverance. He says, uh, and not only that, and let Sadiq spring up together. I, Yahweh, I have created it. He created the righteousness. He didn't create a Maybach. You understand? Uh, he emphasized everything he has created. Uh, oh, he created the ores uh, and all of the substance that a Maybach is made of. Uh, but he did not create the Maybach. You're not praying for him to open the heavens to give you a Maybach uh, or a Lexus. He's not giving you that. Uh, but if we walk uh, in the Sadiq of Yah, if we trust and try him, uh, he will open up the Aruba, the windows of heaven, the window. This is what comes out of the window of Yah. His Sadiq. Uh, it is, his, uh, it is uh, his favor unto us as a nation, Yisra'ya. This is what comes out of the heavens of Yah. Not some damn diamond ring. Uh, not some Rolex watch. You don't pray in supplication for that. It's wrong, Yisraya. Not some more brick house. Uh, we have a house whose builder and maker is not man. Uh, but it's so money, Yahweh. That's why we need him to pour out supplication. That we cry, come, you're sure. Let the kingdom of Yah come. Let it come upon the earth. Uh, I read that before I introduced this in the same book of Yeshaya. Turn back one chapter, chapter 44. Here the Novi speaks of the power, the magnificent beauty of the Ruach of Yah. It's power to influence us to walk in the knowledge of the Torah, Isaiah 44, 1. This is so beautiful here, Yisrael. It is simple. It doesn't take one that is a scholar of Torah to even explain this. I will explain it in simplicity. Yah says unto his nation, he says, yet now, Shemach, here, he calls Yaakov his abbot, his servant, one that is submissive, faithful, obedient with great love. That's what a servant is. It is a servant that he is faithful and loyal, and he trusts with great confidence the one that rules him. It is not a denigrating position or job of that nature because he knows that there is one greater than him that he submits to. He says, yet now hear, O Yaakov, my servant, and he says, not only Yaqub, uh, even though you are the supplanter, he says, and also Yisra'ya, those that prevail uh, by the power of Almighty Yah. That's the nature of true Yisra'ya. They shall have, will prevail against all opposition. And look what Yah says, whom did he not choose Yaqub? He says, whom 
I have Bacha. I have chosen. I'm the one that has elected. I'm the one that elected you. I'm the one that has chosen you. I'm the one that has handpicked you. You didn't pick me. We didn't choose him. He says, Jacob, Yisrael, I am, I am, whom have I or I have chosen. I have chosen only you have I chosen. These are the Tory like ones of Almighty God. He have chosen us for a purpose because he want to pour out. He wants to rook. He wants to shafak. Pour out at the stream. He wants to nazal. That it distill his Torah. The mind of the nuggets of your truth. Distill. Be poured from heaven. He pour you down a 20,000 square foot house. You won't even visit that part next week. Or it take you a week to get back there. Look what Yah says. Verse 2. This says Yah, Almighty Yahweh. He says, I want you to know that I'm the one that not bara, but Asa. I'm the one that made. Asa, I'm the one that fashioned. He's the one that fashions us, Yisrael. He is the one that forms us. He is the one that calls us to do. Listen to what he says. He said, this says Yahweh that made you and form you from the womb you do not form yourself he is the one that made us and formed us from the womb he says and not only that which will not might he said will as i will help i will succor it is a special helper it is a perfect helper it is a help just only special for that Zira of Abraham. He lets us know he will help us. He will azar. He will help us. He will cover us. He will covenant with us. He will be a special help to us. When he says azar, sakor, he said it's a help like the world can't comprehend. It's a special help. He is a very special, precious help in the time of trouble. He said, I will help you, Yisrael. And he tells us, he says, Yira, fear not. O Yako, don't fear. He said, my servant. And you, Yeshurun. You understand Yeshurun? The metaphor? And what it implies, Yisrael? is one that whose heart it represents the very nature and the characteristics of Yah. That is what, that's why he called Yisrael Yishurun. I want you to be like me. I want you to walk like me. I want you to talk like me. It is the perfect characteristic of a nation that Yah ordained for them to be. He called them and there's power in the tongue of Yah. Is not there's life and death in the power of your own tongue? Sure it is. He calls us Yeshurun. He says, whom I have chosen. You should be upright. You should walk upright. Your talk should be upright. Your character should be upright. I have Boha. I have chosen you. And then he tells us this. He says, for I will your shach. I will pour. We need the living water. I will pour the waters of the Torah, the Mayan. He said, I will pour the waters upon him that is thirsty. You don't need no bread. There's a famine in the land. It is not a famine for bread, for water, or for eating. It's for the hearing of the Torah of Yah. This is what Yah said he would do for that zira. He said, I will pour out. The Mayam, the waters, uh, this living Torah of all Maria. Yeah. He said, I will pour out the water and the flood upon the dry ground. Uh, he said, I will pour out uh, my ruach upon your zira. I don't want him to pour out no education for my daughter. I don't want her mind to be polluted uh, with this damn convoluted world. Uh, pour out your ruach. Pour out your spirit. 
pour out, he said, I will pour out my ruach. I'd rather have the ruach, I'd rather have ruach, I'd rather have the life uh, of his testimony, his power, of his truth, his witness in me, uh, than to have a feet of a hundred maybach. I'd rather have the ruach of your poor out upon me than the 10,000 uh, cattle. I'd rather have that. He said, I will pour out my ruach. I will pour out the essence of me. I will pour out a living mind upon you. I will pour out my ruach upon your zira, your seed. And listen to this. We are the offspring of Yisrael. He says, and my blessing. He did not say my blessings. And my berakaya. You tell me there's something greater than the ruach of Yah. Come on. He says, and my blessing is that. Isn't that what it says in Melchiah? He says, I will open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Yeah. Is it not singular there? B-E-L-E-S-S-I-N-G. Does it not say the same thing here? See if I will not pour out a blessing. A berakiah who? Upon your offspring. Upon your descendants. Don't you want the blessing of the power of the Ruach of you upon your offspring and your children don't you want that, Yisraya? He says, if I will not pour out, I will not shafat. I will cause it to distill and the purity of it will flow upon them. The power of my ruach, Yisraya. See if I will not do that. Just trust him as we were reprimanded and encouraged, reproved and set straight. This is what Yah commands us. I'm glad he gives us an instruction like that to remind us uh, to stir up our pure mind by way of remembrance uh, because we often forget, don't we? Uh? So he calls our mind to be stirred up by remembering. Uh, that the simple messenger will remind us. See if I will not pour my ruach. I, Israel, the silver and gold cannot purchase life. But by the same ruach, the same life of Yah that raised up Yoshua Hamashiach. Those that are dead in the coming of our Hamashiach, we that alive shall not prevent them. Just like the graves were open and they went into Yerushalayim, so shall not the graves hold back the Sadiq of Yah. You want him to pour out? It's a dick upon you. You want Yah to pour out his favor upon you. You don't need him to pour out no Cadillac upon you. You don't need him to pour out your 20,000 square foot house or, or a $350,000 house and payments of $3,000 a month that you're a slave driven by a market that is not real. These riches you can't buy. You can buy the Ruach of Yah. You can buy the power of his Rafa, the power of the Ruach whereby even with Hefa when Simeon saw that he says, I, I want that, I, I want to buy it. You can't buy this, Yisrael. You can't buy the Sadiq of Yah. You cannot buy the favor of Yah. Yet he said to the offspring of Yisrael, I will pour it out upon you. I will pour it out. I will cause it to distill the flow. There will be a mist. Just That's what distilling is. There's always a mist of that on you. The air is humid. It's always upon you. Give me that, Yah. You take the silver and the gold. Hallelujah. And that's all right. But why do you think Yah promised us the Ruach? It is the sure signs of his great kindness and his tenderness of his hasid, his mercies, his life, his breath in us. Hallelujah. That's why he has promised us that. And he promised that. Even the Nobi Yoel says it, Joel. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I know what it says, but I want to read it. It says in Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Yah says, and it shall come to pass. We're talking about that day, Joel 2, 28. He said, it shall come to pass afterwards. He says that I will shafak, I will pour out my ruach. Upon all bazaar, all flesh. We are yet fleshly, Yisrael. Yeah. He says, and your sons 
and your daughters shall naba. The sons and daughters are not naba. They're not prophesying. And the word naba is to speak by the influence of the ruach of Yah. So our sons and daughters are not prophesying. They know what uh, the, the extreme and the flaunting of seduction of what the world, the ball players and the, and the Hollywood scarlets are doing. But this is what Yah promised unto the nation of Yisrael, that He will pour His Ruach upon all of us. And then our sons and our daughters, the offsprings of Yisrael, they shall nama, they shall speak by the Ruach of Yah. And that's not what is being poured out and we must get to that place uh, whereby he will pour out uh, and the only way we must be reminded of what Zachin Yarabah Yah taught us. We must have confidence. We must have Bodach. We must trust Yah in life, death. We trust Him. We must have the assurance of that confidence uh, and what that produced in His great faith in Muna, in Almighty Yahweh uh, for the power of the testimony of Yahshua. It is vivid, it's alive, uh, and it's real in us. It's real. That's why we rejoice so greatly because we know it's real. Because we have confidence in our Abba. Hallelujah. He said, I will pour out. I will cause it to distill. I will shafak. When water is distilling, there's a constant as the vapor, as the water drips. You see how it uh, develops. It's always moist there. That should be among Israel. You see, that's not being poured out today. The mind is being flooded with every kind of evil, isn't it? Every kind of vile, wicked thing that even we can imagine. Concepts and thoughts that we don't even know how they derive. Things you've never experienced. And yet the wickedness of darkness. Yah made the evil. He wants us to understand we have to have confidence in Him. He made that for what? To prove Him. To prove us that we're greater than the evil. That He will pour out the Ruach of supplication that we know we can't do it. And that we cry unto him, or, or, or unto our almighty Yahweh, Yisrael. We must cry to him. And it shall come to pass after I will shafak, I will pour my ruach upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters, they shall nama, they shall prophesy. He said, and the elder men, the Zakim, they shall dream dreams. The elderly men today are not looking to dream. Their minds are full of folly. Their minds are evil, they're silly, they're immature. And I say it without repenting. This should be the order of the Zachin. The elderly men, they should see, they should have a vision. And beyond the scope of the small spectrum, whereby they can see. They don't see nothing. They can move beyond their flesh and the immaturity of their flesh. I don't repent of one word I say. Must be said. We're talking about men that are supposed to be seasoned and elderly men that have walked in Yah's truth and had confidence. He did not say that the old men might dream dreams. He said they shall. As a confirmation, they shall understand. What are the dreams? The visions of Yah's wisdom. That the old men have a vision of the wisdom of Yah. They see the display of wisdom, the power of wisdom, and how, because they know that only that can be poured out from Yah. See, that is one thing that he pours out, Israel. We'll get to that. And that's what the old men, and because they don't dream, because they cannot see beyond the scope, they're always concerned about the natural realm of things. Their minds are not what they mind, the kind of things of this life. They don't mind the things of the Ruach of Yah. So they have no vision. And without the vision, then the nation fell and they fell because their minds cannot grapple the truth of Yah. And it's the truth. I don't apologize for that. He says, and the young men, they shall see the visions as the elderly speak to them. Not to discourage them, but to strengthen them. Hell, O oh men, today are grumpy and and mad and evil, and they're segregated by themselves. They don't want that the young men, as they see the beauty of the elderly men, and their voice and their speech, it produced that 
ruach, the spirit, because they pour out of them. Was it not when the woman with the issue of blood, when she touched Yeshua, did he not say that the virtue has been poured out or the high heel has gone forth? And so when we have elderly men, the zakin, that pour out the wisdom of Yah because it has been poured out upon them, I will get to that. Then they pour it out upon the young men that they see beyond the paradox of the battles of their mind. They can see the visions of Almighty Yahweh. They don't see a damn thing because the elders don't see a damn thing. I don't hold back nothing. They think they're wise. He said, I will pour out my ruach. There's nothing that strengthens a nation like the Zakin. Elderly men and women. Nothing. I'm telling you. And all, all men and women should have a beauty of their countenance. All of us. You need to start checking it. Aponim. There should be a beauty about Aponim. That even the young man can see the beauty of life. And as he grows, he is not discouraged. That's why we... You ish, you avat, you don't provoke your children to anger. And so you don't do that. Hallelujah. Is that all he's going to pour out? If he pours that out, that's enough. Hallelujah. Can I read this, Yisraya? Here in the book of Ezekiel, Yeskeon. Again, Yah shows us his great favor, his chen. His compassion, his love for us. He says in the book of Yeskel 32, 39, verse 29. I want to make sure I finish on time, all right? Hallelujah. Yeskel, Ezekiah, chapter 39, verse 29. He says to us, Yah says, although we have sinned, we've done corruptly. He says, neither will I hide my face anymore from you, Yisraya. He said, I will not hide my face from you. He says, uh, for I have poured, I have shafak. And the word shafak, it, it, there's an intensity there. It's like when the heavens open and the rain flows. Where you get, I saw days here last summer. Within an hour, we had gotten three, four inches of rain. Whereby it is an intense rain. And this is what Yah says, I won't hide from you. But I will cause the heavens to open. And I will shafak. It will be such an intense rain. It will be a downpour. It will not just be a, a distilling of my ruach. He says, but I will pour it out. I will shafak out my ruach ha-chodesh upon Beit Yisraya, said the sovereign Omari Yah. That's what we need poured out upon us. We don't need Cadillacs poured out in our, in our bosom. We don't need diamond rings and gold and silver. We don't need that. That will never sustain us. The power of the ruach. We need that poured out, Israel. He said, I won't even hide from you anymore. Although we are sinful and wicked, we are unclean. Yes, I won't hide from you. He says, I'm going to pour, I'm going to shafak. I'm going to pour out with such intensity, with such fervor of intensity. You will know that it's me. We need the power that poured out upon us. That's what we need, Israel. You shall shafak, pour it out indiscriminately, without thought, that we will know that it is our Abba that pours out this great kindness upon us and favor. He doesn't pour out his ruach upon anyone. It is a favor granted unto us. When he pours out the ruach, there, there, there is an accommodation of his mind being poured out in us. There is one that begins... This process with great knowledge of this, it is Shirak. 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 Chapter 39. Shirak 39. One verse I want to read. And this is the wisdom of Yah. When a man begins to give himself to the studying, Lahak. 
the intense study of the Torah when there's a great pleasure in studying the Torah of the Most High. This is what the wisdom of Sharak speaks to us in Sharak 39.6. It says, when Gadol Ha, when the great Omar Yahweh is willing, when there is Hafiz, great pleasure, you, he will be filled with the Ruach of understanding. What are the seven Ruachim of Omar Yam? And look what Yah says. And not only that, but Yah will shafak. He will pour forth the words of wisdom and will give thanks to Yah in prayer. When Yah opens up the wisdom, when He pours out the wisdom uh, unto Yisrael, we will open our hearts and give Torah. We will give praises. Uh, we will speak from the words of wisdom uh, that Yah has poured into our bosom. Uh, you get a Maybach six months late, it doesn't look the same. The interior doesn't look the same. You got scratches and Someone has parked beside your door and put a little dent in that thing. What is the $250,000, $350,000 car? It's insane, isn't it? Why should we aspire for that? Or be inspired by a silly car? And how the enemy flaunt these images before us. That it rapes the strength of our daughters and our sons. In the kind of purity, you must guard carefully, Yisraya. You must protect their little minds. You must constantly reinforce. You must constantly teach. That's why Yah teaches us. He said, he will pour forth words of wisdom. And we shall give toda unto Yah. In Pala, we will pray to Yah. Because of this great wisdom that he has granted unto us. Because we have been students that are willing to study, to understand the Torah of all Maria. And once we began to do that, there will be a great exaltation of our Abba for the wisdom that wisdom grants unto us. In Shirak 2432, hear the word of Yah. The wisdom of this Nobi, this great teacher of Yah says, Shirak 2432, I will again make instructions of doctrine shine forth like the dawn, and I will make it shine afar. Look what Yah says. I will again pour out teaching. That's what we need today. We need to be taught. See if I will not open up the windows and pour you out a blessing. You must be taught the strength and the beauty of a precious, strong ish, a man of strength. You must be taught the beauty of an ish, or a woman of beauty and character and strength. Yah says, I will again pour out teaching like prophecy and will leave it to all who oh, future generation. Are we not the future generations of Shirach? So Yah must open up the heavens to pour out the instructions, the teachings of wisdom and knowledge and understanding unto a nation that is dismal, that is broken, that has no strength at all, that there is no character, characteristics of the great eternal power of Almighty Yahweh among us. We're broken, we're feeble, we're weak, we're insecure, we're not sure, we doubt, we have no confidence, Yisrael. And that's the truth. We tend to miss all of this because we are very obstinate people. We're stubborn and we're hard-headed. But there's, I've preached this over the many years and I've preached for 30 plus years, 33 years, ignorant in all the process. And still I'm ignorant. That's why I must always lahak, meditate and study. But Yah gives us one great assurance of discipline if we just obey this. 
He commands us here in Mishli Proverbs, chapter 1. I read this verse countless of times. Proverbs, Mishli, Proverbs 1, verse 23. He commands us here to shub, to turn, to make a quick turning around. He says, when I speak to you, I want you to turn at my at my reproof, at my correction. What a great blessing, Yisrael. If we would just turn from our wicked ways. He said, turn at my reproof. And he says, open your eye and behold. He said, I will pour out my ru'ah. To you. That's all. Isn't that so simple? If we just turn, he will pour out his ruach to us. And then he said, I will make known, yada, you will experience uh, my, I will make known my dabari, my words of power, my words of strength, my words to make, to create, to kill, to make alive. If we just turn, if we just turn at the instructions of Yah, just turn. To shoot, turn around. Do not advance in the process or the way you're going. Just turn at Yah's correction. Just turn. And Yah says, allow your eye and your spiritual, your mental faculties to be open. And see if I will not shafak, I will not pour out my ruach upon you, in you. And not only that, he said, I will make Yada, I will make known, I will bara, I will create, I will cause my word asad to form, to fashion your mind. I will make known, not just a word, he says, but my dabari, my words unto you. I will make known the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. We must turn, Yisraya. We must turn from the ways that we have done things. That's right, hallelujah. We must turn, Yisraya. We must shub. We must turn around. And he will pour out his ruach. He will pour out his mind unto us. And make known the mighty things of his Torah. That's all we have to do. It's not difficult, is it? If we try Yahweh Bohan, try him, test him, scrutinize him. It's not hard to turn. Will your mind lead you to the left? Turn to the right. Turn it to the right path. Shub. And see if he will not pour out his ruach. For the ruach that is leading us is not the ruach of discipline and obedience. And then he will make known the power of his word to change, to create, to fashion our minds and our hearts, Yisrael. That's what he will do. Hallelujah. I've got four minutes. I will close with one verse here. In the book of Emits, by Numbers. Is a prophecy to us. The prophecy of the Isha of the other great superior happiness of much and plenty. He speaks to his nation in the midst of her ochel, her tents. Numbers 24, verse 5. Yah says, How tough are your tents or your ochel? Yaakov. And he says, your Mishkan, your building, your tabernacle, O Yisrael. He says this to us. As the villages are they spread forth as gardens by the riversides, as trees of Ahavnim Elu, which Yah has not uh, he has planted. He's planted us all. He's planted us, Yisrael. And as a cedar beside the waters. Look what he says. Even though we stand in some of the most denigrating, some of the most hellish place, in some of our own strengths, he says here in verse 7, He shall nazar. He shall cause it to flow down. He shall pour. He shall pour 
the water out of his bucket. None of the polluted waters of the earth, you hear me? He's going to pour out this living water out of his bucket. There's only one bucket, that's Yoshua HaMashiach. He shall pour out the living waters out of his bucket. Upon who? And the zero of the seed. And the seed shall be many in the waters. In essence, the nation of Yisrael shall be a people of multitude scattered throughout the waters of the earth because Yah shall pour out the living water upon a seashell nasal. He shall cause it to distill. It's just like the dripping or the drip irrigation on the water. It always keeps it moist. There's always water. He shall cause the water. He shall cause Torah, truth, understanding, and wisdom to distill unto us, Yisrael. Upon the zira, the seed, shall be many waters. Uh, and his Melachis king uh, shall be higher than Agar. This is the prophecy of Balaam, the same one that was set forth to curse Yisrael. You can't curse what Yah has blessed. No man can curse. He has blessed Yaakov, Yisrael. He shall pour out upon us. And our Melech, Yoshua is our king, shall be higher than Ega. And the, his Melkut shall be exalted. The kingdom of Yah in his promise, there is nothing that can exalt above that. What he wants to do is pour out the wisdom, the knowledge of that kingdom in us, in us trusting Yah in this one thing and see if he will not open the roof by the windows and open and pour out. He will be gone to Ruk. So allow him to pour out his Ruach upon us and in us. His man, his truth, and the wisdom of his Torah, let it distill constantly in the mind of Yisra'ya that we may, we may bring forth zira, seed. The Zakim Benamin says 99.9, .9, the percentage will cause us to fail. We must be complete and perfect in him. And the only way is that mine is poured in us. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all, Yisra'ya. I am on time, my Zachin Yaramiya. May his strength cause us to be revived and cause us to hold fast to all that he grants us. I say to you all, Yisra'ya, let us be encouraged. Let us rest in the assurance of Yah, you that have joined us on the live stream the live broadcast the video or the live audio we greet you all in your sure's mighty name we do hope that uh, that yah has strengthened your bosom tonight he has corrected you and that we all turn at the reproof of yah and then he will pour out his ruach upon us and he will make known the experience of his torah he will cause that to fill our bosom with great delight israel he only does that to the zero, the seed of Yisra'ya. May he enrich you all because his riches and blessings have flow abundantly upon Yisra'ya. Come on, my Zachin, on time. Hallelujah. Ya barak, you all be encouraged and be strengthened by his truth. Hallelujah. I want Yahweh to pour upon us all his ruach. That it fills our cup, but not only that, it fills it up and running over Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. Isn't that a beautiful truth that y'all will pour out? That he will shafak Israel. I don't know about you, but that my, my love's are enlightened tonight. It is fat that Yahweh will pour out his, bar, his barakai, his blessings upon Israel. It's not for the world. It's not for those that are not chosen of Yah. But it's for his chosen. It's for us. It's for his people, for his band, Israel. Hallelujah. So let's deny, delight in his Torah tonight. Let's barack him for Cole, for all that he is doing, for what he has done, Israel. And let's just, he just wants us to delight in him, Israel. That's why he pours his Ruach out, Israel. That's why he pours out his word, his Torah upon us. That we may continue. That we be happy. That we have confidence. That we have the Batak to continue and to press on. To see what 
the latter end of what the end shall be. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. 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 Let us shoot. Let us turn to Jerusalem. Uh, but Yahweh, we do told you, we will rock you for this wizard night, cut they, scripture truth. The opportunity, Yahweh, we could sit and allow you to pour out Yah, your Barakiah from the Shemayims on this night, Abba Yahweh. We do ask that those that are listening by via live stream, you strengthen them tonight, Abba Yahweh, that you will touch those that are weak, that are feeble, that are sick in their bodies, Abba Yahweh. And just pour out your Ruach, Yah. Pour out your Barakiah, your healing, your blessing upon Kol Yisrael Yah, tonight. And those that have traveled here from near and far, Abba Yahweh, you will take them back to their homes, Yahweh, their appointed places safely. That your Melech will be a cap around all Israel, Yah. And all things we do, give you Toda. And we barack you, Abba Yahweh, in the precious and mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach. And his dawn has been poured out for us. We give you Toda in his name. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yah Barak Kol Yisrael, Hallelujah.